I'm here with Sinua Arroyo, the CEO of Tiger. As you noted, they just completed their fundraise with backers, including the Singaporean government and bio firm TBG. Congratulations Thank you so on much. this move. So let's get right into it. What are the next steps for Tiger after this fundraise? Well, not the fun part, spending the <laughs> money. <laughs> so uh, we are embarking a very ambitious international expansion plan. Uh, we currently are present in the six countries. Uh, and we are adding uh, two more countries, including uh, Japan and, uh, and Korea. And of course, we are strengthening our, our human capital. We are going to hire a lot more people, create very good jobs uh, in the, in the tech, deep tech uh, space. Also looking into South America, where we have uh, strong uh, customers like Banco Santander. Uh, so we are going to continue investing there as well. When it comes to human capital, how hard is it to find the right talent in the fintech space? It is a competitive landscape, uh, but if your value proposition is uh, you know, strong, like you offer interest in challenging problems to the engineers specifically, I think it can be done, and we are doing it. Now, Sinua, um, banks are a key client base for you. We're seeing, of course, more IT spending by the likes of JP Morgan. They're allocating more than $11 billion on tech this year alone. And at Deutsche, as part of its major reorganization, we do have them allocating 13 billion euros on tech by 2022. How are you taking advantage of this? Well, that's only good news for us, right? Because uh, some of the things they can produce in-house, they can do in-house, but there are some other portions that they simply have to work with uh, providers like Tiger. Uh, so I think in general it's good news and uh, we'll see that's a positive fertile ground for us to continue growing and expanding the business. Would these legacy like banks attempt to bring those um, uh, uh, sections within in-house so that they can reduce their costs? Uh, in terms of adopting the technology, yes, by all means. Uh, it, that's a value proposition. It's all about operational efficiency, doing things faster, cheaper. Uh, that's our value proposition. And how do digital banks fit into your strategy? You're headquartered in Singapore. Um, they've been a proponent of digital banking for some time now, and five new licenses are to be issued to non-banks. Well, I think it's also good news. Uh, digital banks means technology, and technology needs to be the core of their business, right? So. Uh, I think it's only very good news for us. Now let's turn to uh, private capital uh, markets. How do you see the challenges in this environment? In this part of the world? Um, I think it's a very interesting environment. We are seeing more and more uh, companies, uh, not only in the B2C space, but only into, into B2B. And, and this is a trend that is up and coming. I think we're going to see a lot more coming from, uh, from Singapore specifically, but generally uh, from the region. Um, I think pre-seed, Series A, up to Series B, there is plenty of uh, funding opportunities. The moment you move beyond Series B, the ticket size starts to be a bit larger. It tends to be a bit um, harder uh, to find uh, solid investors. But on the other hand, we are seeing many of the uh, strong names uh, establishing shops in, in, the, in the region. So for me, it's only... Uh, the landscape, the outlook is, is only positive going forward. You say bigger ticket sizes. Well, what does that mean perhaps for earlier stage uh, startups? Is there going to be more competition of some of this uh, private capital? I think yes, and that's healthy as well for both sides, the, the buy and the, and the sell side. And is it going to get more difficult overall for startups to raise money? I think for the good startups, uh, like everything, it will not be more difficult. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to become more competitive, I believe. And as you say, um, back in Singapore, uh, there are uh, the likes of TPG, the likes of Singaporean government, um, looking to expand their footprint in the tech space. Um, but we are having the likes of Tomase, perhaps, uh, to look more critically at their portfolio holdings. Um, do you see big institutional players um, looking more critically at the startup space? I think so. I think particularly in the case of uh, the Singaporean government, I think we all feel the trend that they are putting a lot of weight in the, in the deep tech uh, space, in, in creating a very solid foundation in terms of technology. Startups uh, is the foundation, is, is the, where everything starts. We have uh, SG Innovate, but many other funds uh, that are deploying capital in the, for, for early states and, and so on. Uh, depending on the states of the company, Temasek tend to start uh, investing in later um, <clears throat> stages, but you also have the KKR, you have TPD, you have uh, Sequoia. So, you know, all the big names start to have a, a solid footprint in, the, in, in this part of the world. And that's because, for good reason, right? Because it, the economy is growing and, and, and the, te the tech space is, is building and growing very rapidly as well. As you noted, South Korea is one of the areas yes. that you're interested in. Some of the concerns that are around uh, the economy there, are those uh, worries for you? 
Uh, not really, not at this point. Uh, again, we work with financial institutions and, and they have a need to increase operational efficiency. So a downturn in the, in the economy is only good because you know, they need to adopt more of, of the solutions. If the business is doing well, again, it's also good for us because they need to do more faster, right? So I think either side, we are, we are happy.